My name is Jackie Badwa. I'm the program manager for the Healthcare Analytics Certificate Program at UC Irvine Continuing Education. I'd like to get started just to share um, how we will present this webinar. Um, to get started, you may submit your questions on the Zoom webinar chat to all panelists. This way we will be able to answer all your questions at the end of the webinar. After the presentation, I'll also share a brief overview of our program in healthcare analytics. We are joined by Dr. Montasser Cadre. Thank you, Montasser, for joining us. I would like to give you a brief overview of Montasser's specialty and um, you know, he's very passionate, so I wanted to share some information with you on his role in healthcare analytics. Um, Dr. Kadri has over 25 years of healthcare executive experience from holding his executive leadership appointments at world-renowned health systems, academic and medical centers, and higher education institutions. His expertise have been focused on promoting strategies for maximizing healthcare performances and creating transformational change. Dr. Kadri's professional, academic, and research interests are concentrated in areas of promoting innovation in the higher education and the healthcare field. Welcome, Dr. Kadri. It's a pleasure to have you present on this special topic. I will now turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, good morning, everyone, or good uh, afternoon, whatever you are, I hope you are having a great day and thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm going to share my, my screen. Uh, just give me one second here. Uh, if you, can you stop your screen sharing, uh, Jackie? Thank yes. you. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Do you see my screen? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, great. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. I hope you you are having a great day and uh, thank you for joining us on this webinar. Our uh, focus for this webinar is to really uh, take a look at the role of uh, artificial intelligence or AI in healthcare and how the AI is really uh, uh, empowering uh, patients uh, and improving their uh, healthcare experience. Uh, um, our learning objectives will be uh, to really review the healthcare landscape as we speak and uh, considering what is going on right now and uh, to understand how uh, AI uh, impact healthcare and then how to really uh, assess successful AI healthcare transformation implementation strategies that will enable healthcare organizations and leaders and executives to uh, leverage AI into the patient delivery system. Uh, as you know, all of us right now have been uh, sitting at home uh, because of COVID and I have spent some of my time uh, on Netflix, you know, believe it or not. And I uh, watched uh, the movie, The Graduates. I hope that you remember this movie. It's a really great movie. If you have kids, let them watch it too. It's funny, but it's also um, uh, give us some uh, perspective about what's going on. So this movie was in the early 60s and Dustin Hoffman was the graduate from the college and he had a party in his dad's back, backyard and one of his dad's uh, best friend told him, you know, my best advice to you son is the future is plastic. And that was true of statement way back uh, 50, 55 years ago. But if we jump into uh, the 2020s, what is the future? The future is really analytics and AI and uh, everything in between. Uh, everything right now is uh, uh, being looked at and assessed through the lenses of data, data analytics and AI uh, uh, leverage. Just for example, um, with the COVID-19 pandemic crisis that we have, uh, we have right now created a half a trillion dollar in telehealth and COVID uh, uh, takes the credit because right now most of the healthcare uh, facilities are shifting into um, uh, promoting access to care using telehealth. And the telehealth is really built on integrating uh, analytics and AI applications and tools. So this is the future. And if you really want to be in the healthcare industry, the future is data analytics and AI tools and applications. 
So what is AI? Um, AI, in a nutshell, has been there for almost about like now 70 years. It was introduced in the uh, early 50s at some specific industries, especially in the finance and in the hospitality industry, the service type industry. And the goal was of using the computer or any computer asset to really think and learn and act like humans. And of course, uh, many uh, industries uh, uh, have used AI uh, with success. Uh, and uh, if you remember right now, we have uh, huge companies uh, such as uh, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon, they are really use uh, AI applications to uh, uh, grow their business, to really offer different services and products to their consumers and to really increase their market share and to improve the uh, consumer experience. Uh, just for example, when you are using uh, Uber or uh, Uber Eats, you know, to order something, uh, part of the uh, mechanism to uh, facilitate the ordering and the delivery and the uh, logistic is AI applications uh, embedded into the uh, uh, offers. And uh, the healthcare industry, uh, it has really started slowly but surely on the, um, on the uh, AI application journey. Uh, small, uh, you know, limited scope, uh, uh, projects and uh, programs and will really will uh, be expanded as we are really right now facing the significant disruptions in our healthcare delivery system due to COVID and pandemic and other issues as we can uh, be uh, as we are moving forward uh, in our healthcare delivery system. Uh, so uh, one of the best way to look at uh, the AI and its subfields is this chart from Kumar, one of the leading uh, artificial intelligence uh, gurus uh, in, 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 in the United States. And this is from his um, you know, uh, book that he published in 2008. And he talks about the various and uh, the different types of uh, subsections of AI. And through those are right now being used by most companies, whether it is a machine learning or uh, expert systems or NLV a natural language processing and speech planning, robotics. And, you know, so if you look at the other industries other than healthcare, they are really have embedded artificial intelligence into many, many services and products. And right now the healthcare is catching up with this. So it's important to really look at this chart as a foundational understanding of how AI can be really integrated and can be uh, enhanced uh, in our industry, in our life, and in our experiences. Uh, let's talk about the healthcare landscape in general and see where we are right now. It's important to really understand uh, how the connection between the healthcare landscape and the justification to use and integrate um, uh, AI. Uh, our today, healthcare system is really complex. Uh, as you know, we are going through a huge disruption, the pandemic right now, but before the pandemic, we have had a huge complex healthcare system. If you wanna flip it into some numbers, you're talking about 18% of our GDP uh, growth uh, domestic product, and that represents about $4 trillion plus minus. Uh, and we have really a very dynamic uh, healthcare system. You have the federal government, the private sector, and then you have the consumer side of the healthcare. And uh, all of those stakeholders compete to provide healthcare services. What has really been mostly uh, evident in the last 10 years because of the uh, internet and the digital social media is the consumers are more empowered, more informed, and they wanna have more say and input and uh, influence on the healthcare outcomes. And as a result, uh, healthcare uh, companies, organizations and systems have really been uh, focusing more on population health and coordination of care. And that will be even more as we deal with the pandemic and post COVID and any other major disruptions you might think of. As a result, the integration of digital healthcare transformation and data analytics and uh, you know, many of the tools such as AI, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning and uh, precision medicines have really been integrated slowly but surely into the healthcare delivery system 
Also, you have one more disruption coming through is the retail giants such as uh, Amazon, uh, Walmart, uh, CVS, even the big tech companies, Microsoft, Apple, they are really uh, jumping into the healthcare delivery system, the industry to reform it, to re-engineer it, and to really provide value and to expand their market share. So this is our today healthcare canvas, and that might change as we are dealing with the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, we do face, for sure, some significant challenges in our healthcare system. And that has not happened in the last, let's say, a few years, or it's not a result of the COVID-19. It has been a systematic challenges that we have not really been able to address for multiple reasons. So for example, we, are, uh, we spend the most per capita on healthcare than any other country around, yet we score number 37, according to the WHO, when it comes to patient outcomes. So we spend the most, but we don't even rank in the top five or 10 or even 20. And that is an indication of a healthcare system that needs attention. So some of the challenges that we face in our healthcare delivery system is the poor performance. Uh, as I said, uh, we have a lot of barriers to access to care. We've seen it right now during COVID, you know, how people who have no insurance and struggling to get testing or even to go to the uh, emergency room, uh, poor quality outcomes, uh, that is very obvious. You know, we don't have a universal healthcare system. We have different subsystems uh, and it depends on your insurance, how the quality of care can be measured and achieved. Uh, we do have really a inefficient fragmented healthcare system. We have seen it, you have seen, uh, we spent so much money on the uh, inpatient um, procedure uh, facilities. Yet when the pandemic hit us, we could not even respond properly. So we have mismatch between resources and needs. High cost, we spend the most on healthcare. And as a result, we think of healthcare as a uh, industry that needs so much attention and we have low satisfaction of it as consumers, as uh, industry, as regulators, as even uh, stakeholders and investors. So, uh, if you look at healthcare right now and going forward, we have major challenges and uh, from the pandemic to Asian population, consumerism. And uh, so the guiding principle is uh, the, the healthcare consumer today is in the driver's seat. They want a better patient experience and engagement and we believe that the digital transformation, including AI and other tools, will really help the industry to respond to the healthcare needs and to improve the healthcare outcome and optimize the health and the health outcomes of our population. And that is really, as we speak, is going. Uh, we may have some disruption as we speak right now, but it has been in the last few years, since 2018, this kind of drive is really toward to really engage the patients and increase their uh, awareness and uh, value. Uh, so if you look at the strategic healthcare digital imperatives, there are two sides and we need to understand that both of these sides needs to be addressed. So for the healthcare consumer who are in the driver's seat, they are looking at three things. They need uh, affordability, they need quality, and they need convenience. And the three of them, can really be enhanced by integrating digital tools and applications, including AI. And the healthcare system that is really in the industry, uh, they wanna use more of data and the data is really, uh, uh, can be used across over the continuum of care. They wanna really empower their workforce tremendously and use the data and AI and other tools empower their uh, workforce and to make it more and more uh, agile. And uh, a big benefit of the COVID-19 is the really the integration of telehealth uh, in, in our delivery of uh, services. Uh, the healthcare industry want to focus on innovation environment and there are many examples to share, but this is, this is something that they are really focusing on and developing strategies and the AI strategy is part of it as the right answer to the challenges that we are facing. Of course, they wanna work 
closely with the right partners. So for example, right now you see hospitals, they are open to work with, um, you know, partners who are non-healthcare, you know, such as Apple, such as uh, Amazon and Google and Walmart and CVS. Those guys have been able to really uh, uh, leverage technology and digital transformation, including AI to transfer their business, why not we work with them to transfer or to transform our healthcare delivery system as well. So if you wanna take a look at this snapshot of uh, what McKinsey has done last year, and this is prior to COVID-19, and I could imagine this, these numbers will be a lot higher uh, once things settle down. So most consumer want to use digital tools in healthcare. And most of these tools, by the way, are driven by AI applications and tools. So they are searching for the right doctor based on some specific reviews. They wanna pay their bills and you know, not to cut a check and send a check you know, through the mail, but through applications and website. They wanna monitor their healthcare outcomes. They wanna really uh, you know, uh, shop for the right health plan and, and based on the specific criteria. So when I shop for my healthcare plan online in a secure way, I put my profile and the profile can calculate or you know, uh, design for me a healthcare plan based on AI tools and applications. So uh, those really are numbers that are really shocking. If you can see you know, the integration of that numbers up to 79% and this is 2019, I could really be surprised if those numbers, they are not really more higher and, and uh, on a different scale because of the COVID-19 disruption. So as you can see, healthcare consumers are more engaged. They want more uh, meaningful technology and digital tools, including AI, to be integrated in the healthcare delivery system. So we spoke about the AI and high level and the landscape of our healthcare delivery system. Let's go deeper and see how AI uh, will impact healthcare. I mean, uh, definitely we are poised to become uh, you know, a adapter of AI. I could remember last year when I attended uh, the uh, HEMS uh, Global Conference uh, in Orlando, which is the largest professional meeting ever worldwide uh, of any type uh, that happens every year. About 55,000 people showed up, executives, you know, uh, healthcare leaders, and from 85 countries. So one of the um, uh, seminars was presented by the head of uh, Center of Medical Services. Uh, this lady, she controls the Medicare and Medicaid. You're talking about $2 trillion of spending in healthcare. And she made a very bold statement at, at that conference. And she said, you know, everyone should know that in eight years or seven years, if you guys do not have a data AI analytics strategy, you cannot do business with us with Medicare, with the government. And that was a year ago, a year and a half ago. This is in March, 2019. Consider what happened since then, since then and the COVID-19. So uh, definitely, um, you know, AI is really helping. It's catching wave and catching a lot of attention. And uh, just KPMG recently in May, so this is almost five weeks old number, during the COVID, 89% of all healthcare executives, they said that AI is already creating efficiency in their health systems and probably they will integrate more AI into their daily clinical and business operation. So AI has a future. We just need to know how AI will be contributing into our uh, efficiencies and effectiveness. Uh, how do AI help us as a providers, whether you are hospitals, physician, uh, clinics, or in between? There are many, many uh, items that can be uh, listed and discussed. I think uh, those six are really the leading one that can really uh, provide uh, value to providers by using AI. Uh, the, the power of data will be unlocked by using AI um, you know, profiles and uh, tools to really discover 
the, the some disparities in the data and how the data can help us design personalized medicine and protocols and profiles for our population and patients. AI can tremendously help us to really uh, use data to arrive at situations and scenarios that can help us to integrate evidence-based decision-making process to really address quality, safety, and efficiency of what we are doing. Definitely AI is right now, as we speak, it's helping coordination of care and faster communications. You guys in the state of California, uh, the uh, one of the leading uh, healthcare uh, system, the UCLA, uh, has really was uh, on the cutting edge in helping the state to develop uh, tracking tools for the COVID-19 uh, patients and based on their profiles. So how to really triage patients or uh, those uh, individuals who have specific profile um, backgrounds such as chronic disease or diabetes or specific age so they can be really coordinated of care for them and triaged accordingly during the peak of the COVID-19 way back in March and uh, April. Uh, definitely AI is helping patient engagement experience. I could tell you on my own personal level that AI is really great. I could really right now go into my uh, smartphone. I could access my uh, electronic medical record and I could really look at the profiles of my medical care and uh, develop some uh, foundation to make decisions accordingly. Definitely uh, AI is creating uh, uh, and reducing the labor cost in some specific areas in the healthcare sector, especially on the finance, business, and uh, the uh, billing and those technical uh, business uh, issues. Definitely the clinical is going to be another front where delivery of uh, valuable services with the reduced cost will be the target. And then uh, overall, AI will help improve the healthcare system performance and optimization. And I'll show you some examples accordingly. So uh, here are some of the most popular uh, examples of AI tools in healthcare as we speak. And those have been there for right now, five to seven, eight years. Uh, those at the basic level, but then I will show you a slide where, where we are going with the AI, with this, uh, the, the second phase of AI integration. So many healthcare systems use AI to really uh, manage their research and advanced analytics. They need the data and they can data mine the data to using AI tools to really specifically look at specific population trends and issues and then develop research projects. Uh, they use life coaching uh, and, and personal health. You know, definitely uh, you go into your portal, you put the data on your personal uh, profile and then something will come up and then you could really share the data with specific people within the healthcare system so they can provide you a tailor-made healthcare uh, services. So healthcare uh, AI is using tremendously right now by, they love it, the insurance companies to fight what fraud you know, and, uh, and double billing and upcoding and so forth. Um, AI is right now being used tremendously and it has been really a great success story during the COVID-19 to triage patients. And uh, in normal times, we use AI to triage primary care and patient flow um, uh, profiles for our patients. So those are basic applications of AI tools that have been used in the healthcare industry. and. Um, the next wave of AI tools and applications are really stunning and it could be really a game changer as we move forward. So uh, this is a great article and I just want you to focus on two things. Uh, uh, the date of this article, it was uh, May 2018 uh, by Harvard Business uh, Review, uh, the famous uh, publication that uh, I always read. And it talks about, you know, the 10 uh, AI applications that will change healthcare system. So you could read those on your own, no issue. But then, uh, you know, uh, take a look at uh, the date that they are putting the potential uh, of, of these numbers. So the date is by 2026, uh, we will have this kind of uh, uh, applications, you know, generating so much economic impact 
um, uh, by uh, each category. So if you take a look, the robot assisted surgery, which is totally based on AI applications, will create $40 billion in economic uh, value and activity. So for example, if you are talking about fraud deduction, it's going to really create $17 billion and so forth. So these are meaningful numbers uh you know projecting that it will be by 2026 so this is an eight year framework between the two dates the 2018 and the impact of 2016 which uh, 2026 so this is great it's really uh showing you a, a potential a huge potential but then i'm going to share with you another uh example is that uh just last year, and this is prior to COVID, uh, this is uh, from McKinsey uh, 2019, and they are talking about how AI is really uh, exploding in, 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 in our economy. So take a look at the right side of the slide. You see that the healthcare alone in 2018 or 2019 created almost $50 billion impact from healthcare even bigger than the finance industry. Remember, we started with the AI in the finance industry about 40 years ago, but right now the healthcare surpassed the, uh, uh, the finance industry. So if you take a look, you know, uh, pretty much uh, healthcare is booming when it comes to AI. And I could really tell you based on the McKinsey recent uh, numbers that were just published a, a few weeks ago, in the second slide that I showed you, that number will be about five times between right now and next year. So this number of AI and uh, data analytics impact will be almost $250 billion impact by the end of 2021, imagine that. So what are the key growth drivers in the AI uh, market? Uh, multiple uh, uh, issues or multiple items. Uh, definitely the most important one is the uh, ability to integrate AI to reduce workload and increase quality of care. Absolutely. Uh, we have really, uh, and forget COVID right now, we do have really a shortage of healthcare workers and workforce and in some specific specialties. So to me, the patient demand, that demand will be even maybe bigger as we come out of COVID, hopefully very soon. And we still have the same issue, the shortage. Uh, we are using AI to reduce healthcare costs. Uh, I know that, for example, uh, a major healthcare system um, in, in, in Dallas, they have really, when they integrated their uh, AI tools to help in the billing and uh, um, claims adjustments uh, for the insurance. Uh, they had about 55 full-time FTE working on those two areas. They were able to reduce that uh, headcount to about less than eight, almost 85% reductions. And they were able to shift the, the, those uh, saving into other areas that have been creating more jobs. So, and uh, the AI has a potential to really uh, empower uh, us to use it into precision medicine and uh, other aspects of the healthcare delivery system. Um, this is another slide uh, that uh, I really was reading uh, recently uh, from Accenture and the Frontier Economics Report. They publish every year. And this is stunning if you take a look at it. This is the leading economies in the, in, in the world including the US and other countries, uh, mainly from Europe. And uh, they, they, they measure how AI is going to really improve the labor productivity as a result of AI integration. And this is stunning that between right now and 2035, like 15 years time frame, the labor productivity will increase by 35%, let's say for the United States. Um, and this is major events. If you take a look since uh, 1980 until 2018, so this is what, 38 years, we have been only increasing labor product productivity in the United States by 7%. So AI by itself in 15 years will achieve four times or five times more labor productivity than what we have been doing in the last, let's say, 40 years. 
And this is really a, an amazing, a stunning um, uh, uh, fact and results that we really have to remember that why AI is becoming so critical in our uh, economy and including healthcare. So the next generation of uh, healthcare AI is all about digital applications. And this is really the next uh, wave of AI um, uh, based technology. Uh, we're going to have connected sensor enabled uh, devices and wearables. This started almost four years ago on very limited uh, scope. Folks, it's going to be booming here because uh, with the COVID-19 and pandemic and probably other things, things that might happen, we probably going to use more and more of connected sensor enabled devices to send the patients home and to monitor their healthcare issues uh, away from a hospital so they don't get even sicker and uh, you know become a liability for themselves and the facility uh, genomics will be the another frontier for uh, ai uh, robotics and telehealth as we speak thanks to covid uh, we have been struggling with the federal government to develop policy for telehealth for almost 35 years. Within five weeks, because of COVID, the government has allowed right now reimbursement and approval of telehealth services. So the telehealth is going to boom tremendously and by using big data and analytics data uh, tools and ap applications. So this is really what's going to be driving uh, healthcare moving forward i definitely believe that most of the growth in ai uh the next wave of ai um, post uh, covid 19 will be clinical because the government right now and the insurance companies and even the physician have uh, recognized how important uh, our uh, how important to use ai into the clinical side of healthcare so uh, successful AI health transformation implementations uh, really have to be uh, reasonable, affordable, practical, and uh, you know, uh, being able to sell the initiative to your stakeholders. So um, you know, the key requirement for AI success uh, in healthcare, really three basic elements. And uh, they look basic, but they are really challenging if you think about it. Uh, first of all, you want to understand what type of AI technology application that can do or cannot do for you or for your organization. Uh, there are so much hype, as we know, with anything. So you've got to be careful about uh, what type of AI technology application that will do the trick for your organization. Uh, you really need to uh, develop an AI strategy that uh, not only bring value to your organization, but able to implement it. Uh, you could dream whatever you want, but then if you don't have the, the financial resources, the talents or the uh, workforce capabilities and structure to deploy the, uh, the technology, it's just a dream and, and it cannot be achieved. And once you really have uh, the scope and the abilities, you've got to put in place performance standard for your AI strategy. Uh, you've got to really have uh, the criteria and the measurement, and you've got to really uh, ensure that what you're doing is based on evidence-based and definitely the ROI or the return on investments becomes very critical. One of the issues right now we are facing with the AI application because it, it's based on integrating so much data and data analytics is, are we really ethical when we develop AI applications and the data represent the entire population of all groups and ethnic background and social economic levels? Or, or are we just basing our data on a specific zip code and maybe this zip code could be affluent? they have higher uh, average of income or ed education or even access to care, then let's say a different zip code within the same population that has the opposite uh, uh, results. So there is ethical security and privacy issues that need to be implemented and need to be uh, accounted for. Um, let's do some 
reality uh, check here and be real, I mean, uh, real and uh, look at what really uh, matters and not to be dreaming so much. Uh, you know, there is so much right now to talk about uh, rapid uh, AI deployment in, in healthcare. This is great, okay? We hear many success stories. I get honestly so much invitation to attend webinars about AI. And sometimes I do. And when I have time, and I, I see stories that really just is, does not make sense, you know. Uh, but uh, so we have to be careful because most of the AI uh, projects that have been implemented so far prior to COVID-19 have been small scale or uh, limited impact. So we really need to see the value of AI when we expand those projects into bigger audience, bigger scope and more complex scope. Um, you know, uh, we have seen many organizations that have invested millions of dollars, literally tens of millions of dollars on, um, on AI tools and applications, and they have failed big time. And I don't want to mention names here because I'm not here to go after anyone, but really, if you just Google and say AI healthcare failures, and you can get tons of organizations that have really did not do it right or thought or underestimated the complexity of, of AI deployment. Uh, you know, definitely there is so much hype with AI. It does not promise so much unless you really have the scope and you know what you are looking for and you have measures. So this, those are really some uh, reality check that you have to really be at, paying attention to. Uh, there are some definitely systematic uh, challenges, internal and external, and those can be really a stopping uh, barriers to move forward with the AI uh, strategy. You know, uh, and, and when I teach in, in this uh, certificate uh, program at UCI, uh, I have diverse students, uh, physician, uh, uh, executives, uh, mid-level providers, and early uh, career uh, uh, individuals. And th they share with me, you know, many of what I have to say here in this slide. You know, there are internal challenges, uh, you know, not being able to get everyone on board when it comes to uh, deployment of complex, uh, intensive uh, technology tools and applications. Um, policy within the, in within the industry and within the organiza organization itself is, is, is uh, vague or confusing or uh, not up to bar with the industry standard. Uh, financial and capital requirement, you know, this is expensive stuff. It's not going to be easy to really fund it. And uh, you can't just cut corners uh, when you are developing expensive AI tools. Uh, of course, the external challenges uh, are plenty. And we don't have a policy, federal policy, until what? Six weeks ago about telehealth. Believe, believe it or not, the United States, with all its mighty, we did not even have a federal policy how to use and deploy telehealth until COVID hit us. So the state are yet not on bar with the federal level when it comes to telehealth and COVID. So as you can see, I'm giving you an example of the disparity of the state and the federal re regulations. Uh, many, many healthcare facilities and, and communities, they, they think AI is a threat because it might increase unemployment and they see it as a risk and they don't want to talk about it. And this is a true uh, factor that needs to be really uh, overcome and uh, with the awareness and uh, sharing information that the economic impact of deploying, of deploying AI in the healthcare industry. Uh, there are a legitimate uh, issue about uh, privacy and ownership of the data and what's gonna happen with the data uh, after they are being shared, I can tell you, and this is a really legitimate uh, issue because we have discovered uh, last year, and it was big news item, that many hospitals, when they collect data from their patients and healthcare consumers, they are monetizing this as a product. So they are selling the data to uh, some commercial purposes and making re additional revenue to support their facilities. And this is really without the approval and the consent of their customers and patients. So there is issues with the patient privacy. So the technology is way ahead of us, but then our regulations and our uh, protocols are lagging and we need to catch up to those uh, expectations. So what 
are the takeaways that we have uh, here? Uh, I think to implement a uh, AI uh, transformation strategy, it has to be clear. So AI innovation is not optional anymore. <laughs> I mean, the message came out from the federal government last year, COVID pandemic made it very uh, robust, uh, you know, um, claim that we have to really deploy AI on all levels to really help us uh, manage our healthcare outcomes, especially our healthcare delivery system is fragmented, is wasteful, and does not create the best outcomes. Uh, we need really to be specific and use uh, transformation agenda properly because uh, we do have limited resources and uh, infrastructure and we have many priorities. So it has to be really done with the most efficient, effective way by developing an agenda and a priority uh, that we can afford to do. Uh, the commitment to AI must be really uh, ongoing. Uh, you know, even when there is limited resources, and uh, as you can see, 89% um, of all executives five weeks ago said they are committed to AI and they are using AI tremendously. So, uh, but many of them right now are facing significant financial pressure because of the disruption of their system due to COVID and patients are not coming back yet to see doctors and get their medical procedures done as they used to have because they are just, you know, not comfortable and, or not ready, let's say it. So uh, that will impact the financial resources of many healthcare facilities. Uh, I hope that they can find a way to continue and support the uh, AI uh, moving forward. Uh, yes, when you are involved in AI strategy, you've got to also focus on the financial aspect of it. Yes, ROI matters or return on investments. So we don't wanna really spend tons and tons of money on uh, projects or AI projects that really does not improve quality of care, improve uh, the uh, value proposition for our patients and Im improve their engagement in the uh, delivery of healthcare services. Uh, we have to understand, like other industry have done it, if it's valuable to the customer, then we need to do it. This is what Amazon done it, or Google, or uh, uh, Facebook, or those big giant techs. They do something that the customer want and the customer perceive it's a valuable for them. So we have to do it in healthcare. So we have to really deploy AI strategies and tool if it means it will create a value for the customer. We do really need to uh, collaborate and cooperate with different stakeholders, internal and external and partners. Uh, AI is a complex uh, area. Uh, we may not have all the answers, so we have to really rely heavily on uh, collaborating with partners and stakeholders. I think from this slide, I would like to say that uh, the focus of AI is not on building the AI tool and app. It's really about uh, uh, you know uh, solving the, the issue and improving the healthcare outcomes for the patients. Uh, we we really have to uh, put that as as a value and core mission of the AI integration into healthcare. Uh, I hope this uh, webinar have has helped you to just give you a introduction into AI into healthcare. Um, Thank you for listening and I am more than happy to take any questions and I'll give it to you, Jackie. Yes, thank you so much, Montessor. This was so insightful um, and detailed. I, I really appreciate the information you've shared and especially the challenges. I do see that we have some questions, um, a couple, and I think you did touch on one of them. Um, it was, um, how is AI being used in population health. I think that's an area that is, is of interest as well. Um, right. How is it being used in population health and in communities? I think you touched on Correct. a little bit so about this. I'm gonna take it, mm -hmm. Right, so I'm gonna expand on it in fact. Uh, I'm gonna use the UCLA uh, example. So UCLA uh, was tasked by the state of California during the COVID-19 to really uh, figure out a tracking mechanism 
for their patients in the LA County, which is about 10 million people living there. So the, uh, the uh, UCLA used its uh, electronic medical record and they integrated a AI uh, data mining uh, tool to really look at specific population that they are 65 years old and they have multiple chronic diseases and especially diabetes because diabetes has a impact on the COVID-19 patients. So, and then they developed a tool to locate those patients and uh, then uh, by zip code and then by whether they speak English or not, or they multi uh, bilingual, or if they are handicapped or they have uh, uh, transportation uh, resources, you know, they can come to the clinic or we need to go to them. So that, was, that tool based on 10 million people population living in the LA County was developed over two weeks and then has helped the state and the local healthcare providers and the public health department for the LA County to really reach out to the specific population and triage resources and services to really meet uh, the needs of those populations. So for example, they have patients who really are uh, handicapped, uh, that you live in a zip code that uh, it's you know below the poverty line and they don't have transportation services and uh, probably they need to be tested. So you can ex expect them to come to your testing site. So based on that tool and AI deployment, they were able to identify those and they sent teams and uh, healthcare teams to really take care of them and uh, give them the testing as needed. Thank you. Montaster, sorry, I was muted. Um, there's another question. Um, can you explain a little bit more about this, the recent state and federal regulations? Exactly, so up to uh, um, end of March, uh, the government, uh, especially the uh, Medicare and the Center of Medical Services, and as a result, all the insurance companies, because they follow Medicare and the government guidance, they, they did not recognize telehealth services or telemedicine as a, a legitimate uh, medical uh, services. Uh, they, they said for to get reimbursed, if you are a doctor, you have to see patients in your clinic, in the hospital setting, and so forth. And uh, the, the, uh, the telehealth industry has been lob lobbying the, the federal government for almost 35 years to really allow reimbursement and recognition of services uh, for telehealth services. So um, as, a, as a result of COVID-19, when the entire healthcare system was shut down completely except for patients who have really urgent care needs or they need to be tested and they are sick of COVID, everything else was stopped, but then the population still have medical needs. You know, my daughter had a medical issue way back in second week of April, and we could not take her to any facility because non-urgent, non, uh, you know, lethal uh, issue. So we arranged a telehealth uh, visit with her primary care physician, and it went very well, very smoothly. You know, and um, so right now, as you know, to make the story short, uh, the government have. Uh, the government agencies and the state, uh, they are, they approved regulation to re reimburse uh, um, telehealth uh, based AI applications. And in fact, the government uh, within the uh, healthcare act, they, they allocated $500 million, million dollars grants to develop AI based tools for telehealth applications and they invited industry uh, companies to apply for those grants to develop those um, uh, tools. So as you can see, a, uh, a pandemic crisis uh, forced the government to really update their regulations. And that is one of the positive things about COVID-19, if you wanna say, if there is any positive. Yeah, thank you so much for highlighting that in the slides in your um, presentation. I do have another question. Um, it looks like many of the capabilities from AI are very similar to those from IT 20 years ago. What can make AI more successful than IT this time? I'm wondering if it can 
can end if it ends up not as effective outcomes as we have now. Um, so I'm thinking there asked there's three questions here, but um, basically um, it looks very similar to IT um, capabilities 20 years ago, and what can make AI more successful um, than Correct. the past. Uh, the, the question is really spot on. Uh, maybe I forgot to mention this in my presentations. You really need to remember that healthcare lags behind other industry by at least 15 to 20 years. So we are catching up to the other industry. So again, our integration of AI as we speak, let's say prior to COVID has been basic because uh, uh, you know, remember, you know, up to 10 years ago, the entire healthcare system was paper-based uh, system. When we had in 2009, the high-tech act signed by President Obama and where we introduced the electronic medical records. So in 10 years, we went from a paper-based healthcare delivery system into right now, electronic medical record uh, healthcare system. The AI integration has been there for almost right now for five years in, in healthcare. So it will take some curve, learning curve to be there. However, if you think about it, uh, we will catch up very quickly because you have the giant tech companies. They are seeing healthcare as a growth uh, side for them to grow their business. And they are really deploying so much resources and talents and infrastructure into AI healthcare. So the next step, in AI will be robotic, will be telehealth, will be uh, genomic uh, you know, uh, analysis and precision medicine and uh, those high uh, advanced applications of AI uh, other than, you know, let's say tracking a billing and, 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 and uh, very minor uh, you know, basic uh, task that we are doing right now. So uh, give us some time and you will see how AI will be really the game uh, of the name of the game in, in healthcare. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we'll continue to take some questions. In the meantime, I'm going to go over a little bit about our um, program here um, at UCI BCE. Um, we offer a fully online program in healthcare analytics. Um, it is partnered with our schools on campus as well, um, UCI's programs in public health and also uh, UCI's Institute for Clinical and Translational Science. So we are very happy to have developed this program and work directly with them on new programs and new initiatives um, in healthcare analytics. Um, just to give you a little bit more about the program, um, the healthcare analytics um, certificate, it's a specialized certificate. Um, we require students to take four courses in the program. Um, you have a choice of taking actually all six. Um, and this course, Precision Medicine, along with the AI course will be offered soon. Um, the AI course will be offered this summer. Um, and we're really looking forward to that topic in the portfolio. Also, Precision Medicine will be offered in the fall. And that's a great topic as well. That's the last course in the program to be offered. Um, but again, students can choose four or they can also choose not to be in the program and just take the necessary courses based on their requirements and their needs. Um, I probably, I think I want to share a little bit about who should enroll. Montessor talked about, you know, the students in the courses, um, this, the different types of students. Um, can you give us a little bit more, Montessor, on, on who should enroll on what you're finding, how this program is attracting different um, students, whether it's from research, whether it's from pharmacology, um, you know, medical doctors. Can you give us a little insight? Right. So uh, the the program and the courses offered are really ideal for students who uh, probably uh, have different needs and different expectations. So we have uh, some students who are really aware of what's going on. They just need to really understand the strategic implications of, let's say, data analytics or uh, data mining or uh, uh, AI ap applications. And uh, so they are, uh, let's say, executives in their systems and they, they are facing, let's say, with a implementation of a project and they wanna understand the operational needs and the strategic needs to really move forward with this. 
we have some students uh, where they, they know almost nothing about uh, data analytics or, or data mining or AI, and uh, they take those courses to really enhance their foundational uh, knowledge. So I really recommend this uh, course and the program and certification to wide variety of students uh, from the early career into the middle management into the advanced executives who have uh, really specific needs. It will really give you a, uh, a meaningful and comprehensive uh, way of assessing how data in all of its shapes and scopes really uh, help the healthcare industry move forward by deploying that data into data visualization, into databases, into data mining, into AI projects and initiatives. So uh, the flexibility is there and uh, you will get uh, the, the most important knowledge and uh, experiential learning possible in some, some specific courses that you will, uh, you will uh, do. So for example, uh, two weeks ago, I finished teaching the uh, data visualization uh, course and uh, we had a project, a uh, course project to develop a data visualization uh, instrument. And I had about maybe 10 or 11 students, two of them are MDs and nurses and executives. They developed tools. I was really, I, I swear, I was stunned. I've told Jackie uh, two weeks ago, I said, oh my gosh, you know, they really, many of them had no idea what is data visualization and they use data visualization instruments uh, creation. If you look at it during COVID-19, one of the best tools that helped healthcare systems and public health department to really respond to the COVID-19 requirement is the ability to utilize data visualization instruments. So the students saw the value of this and they said this is maybe was one of their best courses they have ever taken in their professional life because they connected the dots between what needs to be done and how the value of the learning can help them grow professionally and help their organization. I absolutely understand because just working with you and you know reviewing the courses, I was also able to understand the visualization and capturing the data um, during COVID. Um, it's really helpful to understand, but I also, you know, I know that there's students, um, undergrads, people that have, you know, are going to graduate or planning to graduate um, with a degree in um, social science and going more into the counseling positions and um, whether it's in the population health area or community health. I know that there are a lot of social um, workers out there as well. Um, I found that this, the first course, the healthcare analytics program is very helpful. You don't have to be in, in the whole program, but if you wanna capture healthcare analytics or informatics, this is a great course to start with. If you're not necessarily in technology or wanna go further in data mining, but the health analytics course, I say it's a good one as well. What do you think, Montessor? Yes. Okay. I, I do agree with you. Yeah. Exactly. Um, let's see what else. Um, just to go over what's being offered for summer. Um, this is our summer quarter and we're still accepting registration um, into these three courses. Um, I'll give you the dates right here. Um, the healthcare analytics course starts July 13th um, and also healthcare data acquisition and management will start July 6th, which is coming up soon. And also the AI course as well um, with Montessor. So, we're really looking forward to these topics and these topics really integrating with people's lives um, as health consumers and also as students in a learning environment. Again, the program is fully online and it was developed to be online as well. So we have lots of interaction and Montessor is a fabulous instructor, the other instructors in our program. They are really great and in tune in this industry. So I really would like to thank uh, Montessor for present, presenting on this topic. Uh, we really appreciate your work um, in this area and bringing us such insightful um, information. Um, and I think we're almost out of time. We have two more minutes. If there's any other questions, please feel free to send me an email and let me just pull up. Um, and this is also being recorded just to let you know. And so you will get um, a recording email, I believe the following day, 24 hours. Um, here's my email. You can contact me. Um, email is best as we are working from home, but I will be able to reach out to you by phone as well if you leave me a voicemail.
Um, thank you everyone for joining and thank you Montessa again. Have a great day. Thank you everyone, take care.